Well, I was uh, a college student at Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut, uh, and I certainly remember walking across the campus uh, and headed for my dorm, uh, and a, another student came out of the door that I was just about to get to, screaming, the president's been killed, the president's been killed, or Kennedy's been killed. Uh, and of course, everybody around me was just totally stunned. Uh, it's one of those experiences that you'll never forget. And one of those experiences which is really disorienting. You don't know what to do. And so everybody gathered around the television set and basically we were glued to the television with news coming out of Dallas on a sort of hourly basis. Uh, and then watching uh, Lyndon Johnson being sworn in and so forth, it was really quite, quite traumatic. Well, I think that uh, the Kennedy legacy has both become more dramatic and glamorous than it was at the time and less politicized, uh, but also has been uh, tarnished by some of the activities that went on uh, that we didn't know about. Uh, speaking primarily of his health issues with Addison's disease and a very uh, bad back uh, that incapacitated him at times, and also about his philandering and bringing lots of women uh, into the White House, notably the sex symbol of her era, uh, Marilyn Monroe, and this glamorous president uh, was quite uh, unknown to us at the time. Uh, the press knew about it and covered it up at the time, but in the post-Watergate era, uh, no longer do presidents have that zone of privacy. So I think that um, to some extent, the image has become more 3D, uh, more 360, um, but at the same time, uh, he's become uh, nonetheless an icon uh, because we didn't have Kennedy to grow old. We had a young, dynamic, beautiful president uh, whose life was suddenly terminated in a great national tragedy. Uh, and we didn't have a Kennedy reelected, a post-President Kennedy, a Kennedy getting older uh, and uh, dying uh, ultimately of old age or whatever. We didn't have all of that. So to some extent, his, um, his, the iconness of Kennedy was cemented by the fact that he uh, was killed in the prime of life. Well, I think there are two views of political leadership and two views about uh, Kennedy's leadership in particular. One is that uh, being uh, a charismatic person who can bring the nation together and uh, try to address social problems and create an aura around him, that that's part and parcel of effective modern leadership. Uh, the other view is that uh, it really is the accomplishments that get uh, enacted that one should pay attention to. And I think Kennedy is, uh, is stratified on both of those. Uh, so it, clearly he succeeded in the former, very telegenic, uh, very, very well spoken, uh, really kind of rallied the nation around him. Uh, but his accomplishments were actually pretty paltry. Uh, so one would have, certainly have to list the Cuban Missile Crisis and the standoff with Khrushchev and the Soviet Union as a major success. It could have been very dangerous uh, success. Uh, and then the Peace Corps and the domestic Peace Corps and then his pledge to put a man on the moon and the creation of the NASA program and all of that. I think those are the things that you'd have to list him as his credits. Having said that, the Kennedy loyalists would say that their intent was that he would win the 64 election as overwhelmingly or almost as overwhelmingly as Johnson did, and then he'd have the political muscle to put through a lot of his program that had been languishing in, in Congress. I think one thing that might surprise them uh, is that he was very much of a, uh, a, uh, a strong pro-defense. Uh, he ran on there being a missile crisis with the Soviet Union that we were falling behind. So he was aggressive on foreign policy in a way that led him into some trouble. So I think 
the, uh, immediately upon taking office, he was confronted with the Bay of Pigs uh, that uh, he decided not to commit troops to uh, and it failed. And I think that was a, a major learning lesson for him. And yet at the same time, when he got into the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, he uh, did not take the word of the generals and the admirals, uh, but figured out a middle course uh, that would allow us to escape a nuclear war. We're never likely to have that because uh, it's always possible to think uh, of other contingencies that could have been taking place. Uh, somewhat like uh, right now we could think of many ways in which terrorists could attack the United States and we have to plan contingencies against all of them. So conspiracy theories uh, are abound uh, because people can think of every little uh, uncertainty might produce some other explanation for it. So one of the most uh, prominent uncertainties is why Lee Harvey Oswald waited until the limousine had turned the corner and was moving both across his field and down away from him and accelerating, which was a much harder shot than the shot that he could have taken as the limousine was coming directly towards him before it turned the corner and it started heading out of Dealey Plaza. So any good uh, uh, sniper would have taken the first shot when it was clearer, uh, a clearer shot and more, more stable target than the ones that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald chose. So that sort of thing uh, creates all kinds of reasons why people might think, why did he do that? Maybe it was as simple as the gun jammed or something like that, uh, but, uh, or he was having doubts. Um, but it, it has become the stuff of conspiracy stories. We'll never know the full answer. Well, I think it's uh, a, uh, a wonderful family story of something of a dynasty. Uh, it's American royalty. Uh, we even use the word Camelot to describe uh, the Kennedy administration. Um, which comes from English history, of course, uh, history of kings. Uh, so you have a, a very handsome family, kids uh, growing up in the White House, young kids, a beautiful wife, uh, four brothers. The first one gets killed in the Second World War, can't be elected president. They get the second son into the Congress, into the Senate, uh, into the White House. Then the Attorney General runs for president in 68. Uh, his brother is elected uh, in 62 as a senator from Massachusetts. So you have this uh, dynasty, really, of American royalty um, that uh, is just now passing out of that generation with the death of Ted Kennedy maybe three years ago now. Um, so I think it's a, it's a kind of storied history of great expectations, great success politically, and yet marked by tragedy at almost every turn.